Hello and welcome back to uh, Drive Driver Driven. My name is Humble and uh, here's a little update on, well, the last video you guys saw, which is uh, unfortunately when the Blunicorn burned up. Uh, I wanted to show you kind of the aftermath of that engine explosion and where the chassis is sitting right now. All right, so right here are our problem children. So these are the number three and four rods, pistons, wrist pins, and rod caps. Uh, as you can see, this is the one that left the building. Uh, this is the rod that punctured our fuel tanks. Uh, well, one fuel tank, uh, one set of fuel lines, uh, oil line, and a water line. Uh, this one uh, got wadded up pretty good but didn't manage to leave the block, but it was halfway sticking out. Um, these are our what's left of our rod caps. Um, you can see there is a lot of heat discoloring and distortion besides just general bearing melt um, and getting beat up, thrown around inside the engine. And our pistons. Uh, the wrist pins pretty much just fell out when the piston... Uh, a wrist pin retainer, whatever area you want to call that, uh, broke apart. Uh, this was our number three piston, which pretty much just got stuck in the bore and stayed there. This is our number four piston, which actually hit the head and then shattered like this. Um, these are stock LS7 uh, hyper-eutectic uh, pistons. I think that's how you say it. Um, and I'm not sure that uh, uh, forged pistons would have fared any better in, in this instance, but these are the stock titanium rods, uh, big ends, etc. Uh, over on the heads, the, the heads themselves don't look too bad. Uh, they may be salvageable as cores. Um, right here is uh, number four, where you can see that the Piston actually gave it a kiss, and I've seen far worse, so that might be salvageable. Um, even the oh, valve got a little love. But the from the fire, these are our engine mounts, and you can see they just started to melt from the heat, and this one even just started running out, the rubber isolator inside of it. Um, here's the uh, damper there. The rubber inside the uh, damper actually melted a bit, and so it, it's pretty much toast. On the engine side, here's the real carnage. So down inside here, this is our 3-4 journal. Uh, that is where our rods decided to take leave. A uh, nice big hole in the block and one to match on the other side. Um, you can see the... I don't know if this is what they look like from the factory, but these counterweights um, seem to be discolored. At least they look discolored to me um, versus this one, uh, which makes me think these got really, really hot, either from um, you know bearing wear before the engine gave out or just afterward when there was a fire uh, in the car, in the engine, just generally everywhere. Um, down below in the pan, it's just shrapnel, bits of block, bits, bits of the uh, pistons. Uh, you can see where the rod just absolutely crushed the oil pickup. Not that that mattered when everything went awry. The uh, windage tray looks like a bomb went off, and that's not far from the truth. Um, I, I think the engine was spinning about 6,000 RPMs when the rod let go. Uh, so that's what it'll do to a, a piece of steel or aluminum. Uh, pretty much everything in this motor is toast. Um, back over here, uh, our intake box setup. I might be able to salvage the MSD Air Force intake. Uh, I need to take a look at it. It is a thermal plastic, uh, and... It was somewhat protected from the fire. Ditto for our uh, carbon air box, although the carbon is 
discolored, so I, I may just clean it up and, and uh, finish putting gold all over it um, to, to hide the blemishes anyway. Uh, I'm a little worried about this uh, uh, throttle body um, simply because this motor assembly was kind of generally in the area where the one of the fires was. So I, I worry that the stepper motor in there is still healthy. Uh, that might need to be replaced. Now on to, well, the car. <clears throat> so, as far as the Ultima goes, this is where we're at right now. You can see we've pulled off the nose and we've pulled off the rear clamshell. Um, interior's pretty stripped out. Uh, here you can really see some of the uh, the fire carnage from the back and just how far it got into our wiring. Like everything you see that that's that teal color, that's just naked copper that um, all of the insulation got eaten off of. So that's our wiring harness for the, the car, for the engine, for the motorsport equipment. Um, these wires here sticking out and coming back, those are our shift cables and our uh, e-brake cables. Those are all pretty much seized up and melted. Uh, over here, those were our, our battery leads. So uh, that's our, our one of our positive battery feeds that went from uh, the starter, which was down around here, and it went up and around to the alternator, which is over in this area. And that's all toast. Uh, also down in this area was our brake lines that feed the rear brake circuit. So those will need to be replaced. Um, something interesting to note was the, the area where the fire was right here in the body was directly behind, uh, one of the aluminum panels that had this, uh, gold heat shield on it. And, uh, the fiberglass there looks not too bad. You see some smoke damage here, but anything that was directly behind the aluminum, uh, looks looks pretty good but you know all that looks nasty so that'll all have to come out um and again our fuel safe tank uh this is our mvp because without this uh, uh the whole car we wouldn't be talking about a rebuild we would have been uh looking for another car and you can see it's got the foam in there. We had to pull these cover plates off just to be able to drain it. Our rear bulkhead down in the pans. Lower footwell area. A dash. It's all dusty and dirty. Covered in dirt or fire retardant or what have you. And then everything up in the nose was fine. Yeah, you know, that was unaffected by the fire. But we will have to replace things like uh, the battery. I'm pretty sure if you look at the uh, corrosion down there, um, I don't know if the battery burst or it got a crack or something, uh, or if there's some other issue caused from the, the wiring short, but you can see all that nasty corrosion down there. So we gotta clean that up. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, over here we have uh, all the carpeting and some of the heat shielding that I, I ripped out. All that will have to be replaced. And this is some of our plumbing, both for oil and uh, fuel. Actually, some of the water lines. Um, this is the water line that got ruptured. As you can see, it's just completely punctured and torn when the uh, rod hit it. So what happened was the, the rod hit this and hit the f fuel lines and the oil lines that were in there. Um, it, basically the, the rod was thrown up into this corner and right there you can see the outlets for the fuel tank. Also in this area is where the water line comes in over there. 
and then our oil tank usually sits in this area too. So we have fuel line, water line, and oil line all in this corner. And the rod pretty much just wreaked havoc down in that corner and punctured every line it could find. So, uh, I mean, there you, you have it pretty much. Uh, so that's where I'm at currently. Um, the, the process right now is I have to finish tearing down the car, uh, and we're almost there. Uh, I'm waiting on getting the windshield out, which I may have had a, a tip today. Uh, and once the windshield is out, uh, I can pull the body completely off the chassis, and we can pressure wash it and uh, take a look at the damage. I don't think the chassis has been annealed in any way. Uh, the powder coat's definitely a little rough looking, but other than that, uh, I think it's fine. Um, so once we get the body off, uh, the next step is to catalog everything and, uh, we have to submit our insurance claim. So, uh, I alluded to some insurance, uh, before. And so since I am the shop in this instance, uh, what my insurance provider wants to, uh, wants me to provide is an itemized list of every part that's damaged or needs to be replaced um, and an associated like line item list along with a photo of the item in question. And I submit all that stuff. And uh, the, the claim is basically already approved. They just need kind of proof of parts, proof of damage or whatever. Uh, not something that you would usually get from a normal shop, uh, but something that they request from me since I'm just some schmuck who built a car. So I got to provide all that. And then uh, once that's done, um, they said uh, getting a check turned around would be pretty quick. And then um, I can get on an order from Ultima and uh, we'll see about getting that order placed sooner than later uh, because I will be making a trip uh, over to the UK here in a couple of months. Uh, and I would love to see uh, my order getting made uh, while I'm there at the factory. And I, I think that would be brilliant. So uh, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Let's... Uh, get this done and then get the body off the car and get this process moving forward. Um, I know this is kind of a short video today, so uh, kind of thanks for hanging in there. Um, videos are going to be kind of a little sparse here and there, uh, just as progress on the car here is a little slow. Uh, but now that we're all caught up, uh, you know, it feels great to finally loop everyone in on uh, what happened, what's going on, and kind of the state things are in currently. So uh, with that being said, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.